Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dark Trilogy, episode 10. And since last episode, I did a little bit of mining, uh, mainly for some iron, because we're going to be needing probably a fair amount of steel. So last episode, we got started with the production of steel, thanks to Tinker's Steelworks, um, and also Industrial Craft with its blast furnace and the refined iron. Uh, you guys are going to notice as well, I went ahead and did a little bit of organizing, which means I actually made another... Uh, chest in this case a gold chest to store all my um, kind of valuable items or what I feel to be my valuable items um, this chest I went ahead and replaced just as a uh, kind of random miscellaneous chest for now we have our other random miscellaneous chest uh, the wood in nature chest um, this is where I'm going to be placing all my ores for the time being uh, there's our nether items and then our building blocks so really need to start getting a lot more organization and a, a nice storage room up and running fairly soon uh, hopefully we will uh, you guys will also notice since last episode I went ahead and swapped out my insulated copper cables with these insulated gold cables I've also went ahead and made two regular industrial craft generators uh, I've been having a little bit of problems with the windmill. It's working now, obviously, because, you know, I'm recording and it's like, hey guys, I'm gonna actually work this time. But <laughs> earlier it was not working and I needed to, you know, refill all my power. So um, now it's actually working. Mm, I thought maybe it was the copper cables, which is why I swapped it out with the insulated gold cables. I, I really just, I don't know. Maybe it's just, there was just no wind for a while and I, I I don't know but two generators just in case I need a little extra power but I will be um, upgrading our industrial craft power generation in the near future just uh, for now this should suffice so um, I also want to go ahead and do a little bit of work today in Tinker's construct uh, we actually have a uh, looks like a lot of new stuff in Tinker's construct in fact let's just go into our NEI subsets scroll down to Tinker's Construct, and let's kind of take a look. I scrolled through and noticed that there's, um, well, like all this uh, here, we got the short bows, we have throwing knives now, uh, crossbow limbs, long bows, javelins, so <laughs> a lot of like long range weaponry now. We also have shurikens, um, that's awesome, like ninja stars and stuff, that's, that's cool. Uh, what I want to work on today is something that's also going to help me um, for, you know, gathering wood. I've been uh, having to go out there and chop it down manually with my chainsaw. I think a lumber axe would be very nice to have at this point. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to take the uh, smeltery I made last episode up one more block. So we should be able to hold four things now, as you can see here in the inventory of the... Um, or the um, interface of the smeltery. Uh, let's see, four of the uh, slots actually light up. The last two do not, so we can use these four slots for now. Like I said, this is a small smeltery, which means it might take a little bit longer. You know, I can't put as much in there, so it might take a little bit longer to make some things, uh, but for now, it should work. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's grab Tinker's Weaponry, which, let's see, I went ahead and made off camera. I believe see there we go mighty smelting so if you remember last episode I showed you guys how to make the book from Tinker's Construct the initial one if um, you didn't actually have it the materials in you if you just place materials in you into your crafting square again you get the volume 2 if you place that in there again you'll get the mighty smelting and then if you place the mighty smelting in there that'll give you Tinker's weaponry so I can take a look through here Kind of read up on this just a little bit, and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and read up. I'll see you guys back in just a minute. All right, guys, and we're back. So, went ahead, did a little bit of reading through the Tinker's Weaponry. Um, obviously, first, before we really get started, we're going to have to start crafting ourselves some stencils for one. There we go, some blank patterns. And afterwards, we're going to want to combine that with a crafting table to get ourselves a tool station. And did that actually give me another book? Sounded like it gave me something. I'm not actually sure what that actually gave me. 
Um, I think, oh, yep, there it is. It actually gave me another Materials in You Volume 2. All right, finally decided to show up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started crafting a little bit of aluminum brass. So I'm going to throw some aluminum ore in there. It's a 3 to 1 ratio, so I'm going to use 3 aluminum ore, which this will actually double it, giving us 6 ingots worth, and then a copper ingot. So we're going to need 2 copper ingots. It'll, um, it'll melt down here in just a second. We'll have room for the other one in a sec. So, All right, so I'm going to combine blank pattern and a chest together. That'll give us our pattern chest. Stencil with oak wood will give us our part builder. And a blank pattern with a plank that will give us our stencil table. Alright, so I think I'll just go ahead and set this up. Maybe... Hmm. Alright guys, decided to place the tinker's tables in the corner here next to the smeltery for now. Eventually, I think what I'm going to do is probably make a blacksmith area. Um, probably close to the house somewhere um, and place all my tinker stuff in there. I've also went ahead and upgraded my tool station into a tool forge. I used some blocks of gold just because, well, uh, I kind of want to be using my iron for steel or saving it for whatever else I need. Iron's uh, pretty useful. Um, got a decent amount of gold, so I went ahead and decided to use gold for this. And our seared bricks. Went ahead and placed it down already. And when I did, it did give me a copy of Tinker's Weaponry 2 as well. So, uh, just kind of looked around a little bit. And now I'm looking to make my lumber axe. So what we're going to need is... Well, I'm going to need some casts for one and some stencils probably. So, I'm going to go ahead and place my blank patterns here. Um, looks like we got uh, a couple of them on the right side now too. I'm wondering if um, there's any... Oh, Yep, there looks like some missing ones in there, so I just kind of have to click in there. It might just be because of my texture pack that I'm using, which is Faithful 32. Um, I'm wondering, let me, uh, if I switch over to default in-game, it might crash the game too, so, hmm, I'll try it and see just real quick and see if it's just my texture pack. All right, guys, and we're back on the Minecraft default texture pack, which <laughs> a lot of difference, but uh, it does look like it was just my texture pack, you know, not showing these things. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and take a look at the stencil table. Yep, it was just the uh, Faithful 32 texture pack, so I might look at trying to update that, see if it's um, been updated yet. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the stencils that I want. I'm definitely going to want the uh, tough binding pattern. Large plate pattern, broad head axe pattern, and there should be a large, yeah, tough tool rod pattern. There we go. Now, I also would not mind making a crossbow. So there's the crossbow limb pattern. Um, I believe this is the bowstring. I'm probably going to need that too. Let's see, crossbow body part pattern. Pick that up as well. Probably a fletching pattern. Bow limb shuriken pattern. That might be everything I need over there. All right, let me just take a look here. So we're going to need the tough, um, what is that, tough binding? Yep. The uh, crossbow body pattern, the uh, crossbow limb, and a uh, bowstring of some sort. Now, the bolts. What are we going to need for the bolts? Where are those at? Those are the um, throwing knives. Oh, there they are, right there. And for that, we're going to need the bolt core and a fletching. So it might actually say in the Tinker's Weaponry how to get the bolt core. I believe it actually did. So I'm going to go ahead and swap over real quick to my uh, actual uh, Faithful 32 texture pack again. And I'll see you guys back in just a minute. And back on the Faithful 32 texture pack, I also went ahead and grabbed a few more patterns here. I went ahead and made a pickaxe head pattern, tool binding pattern, and the uh, tool rod pattern. What I'm going to wind up doing real quick is making me a pickaxe. Uh, the reason for this is I'm going to be heading off to the nether, grabbing some cobalt and ardite, which is like kind of like the in-game metals uh, for my lumber axe that I want to craft. So... Let's go ahead and toss the tool rod pattern in here. We're going to go ahead and get our stone tool rod. And we got ourselves an extra stone shard, which I can use with the tool binding pattern. So this is kind of like half of a, 
of a material cost here because this only costs like you know 0.5 of a material and cobblestone being you know a full one piece of material we're going to use the stone shard to get the other piece of um here the uh stone binding so that'll work out just fine we'll go ahead and use a pickaxe head piece of cobble to get our stone pickaxe head and i'm going to go ahead and throw these right here we got our molten aluminum brass ready to go i'm actually going to go ahead and craft myself a another faucet for upstairs there we go. I actually grabbed my uh, liquid transfer node. I had picked that up from underneath the uh, fluid canning machine because of downstairs. Um, so we could use that here to help fill this up. It would fill it up a lot faster, but it's also, um, it just kind of does it itself. I wouldn't mind just kind of, you know, actually filling this up manually myself for the time being. So let's do the stone pickaxe head next. All right, there we go. And the actual... Um, stone tools are actually making their way down into the chest courtesy of the hopper. So, oops, give me that one back. I wanted you there. Nice. All right, so there we go. Tool rod, tool binding, pickaxe head cast. Now, in order to mine the ardite and cobalt in the nether, we actually need a high enough, uh, well, pickaxe in order to do that. Now, there's two um, to work towards that you can do to actually mine those before you get ardite and cobalt. You can make an alumite pickaxe or steel one. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make me a steel pickaxe head. We're going to come downstairs. I don't have my uh, casting table. I need to probably grab the other one and place it downstairs. And I'll go ahead and place that right there. And pour out a little bit of steel from the high oven to make my steel pickaxe head. Nice. Now, I can pretty much use just about whatever else I want for my pickaxe here. I think I'm going to go ahead and probably go with netherrack for the handle. And if I really wanted to do this right, I could probably do like paper for an extra modifier. But I really don't plan on using this pickaxe very much. But I'll probably just go ahead and do it anyway. Just in case. So wait, what am I doing in the stencil table? I need the part builder. Alright, so let's use our tool binding pattern. Now, seeing as how these are not metals, we can go ahead and craft these here in the part builder. So we just need our tool rod pattern. Netherrack. So we get our extra netherrack shard, which I'll probably just toss away. And paper. Paper is actually a... Um, half of a material cost. So there we go, paper binding. Let's go ahead and combine those together here in the tool forge. Another rack rod, paper binding, and our steel pickaxe head. That gives us four modifiers now, thanks to the uh, writable on the paper binding. That'll give us an extra modifier. And here we can actually name it. So, hmm. All right, you guys can name your tools whatever you want. I'm going to actually name this uh, after the traits of the uh, items that I'm using to craft the pick. So I'm just going to call this Nether Steel. Oops, not Stell. Steel, <laughs> if I can actually type. So that'll be the uh, Nether Steel Pickaxe. There we go. That should be good. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. You guys will notice that the mining level here is cobalt so now I should be able to go ahead and head off to the nether and do a little bit of mining with our new pickaxe I'm also going to go ahead and place all of my my patterns here into my pattern chest that'll work out just fine and I'll probably toss this netherrack shard at some point but for now we'll just toss it in here as well as the books that and I'm going to make my way off into the nether when I get there I'll see you guys in just a second all right, guys, in the nether now to just find ourselves some ardite and cobalt. Now, ardite is sometimes a little tricky to spot, but uh, cobalt you can find because it's uh, blue. It's not too bad to uh, notice and see. So uh, the ardite is a little yellow, kind of maybe like an orangish color. Um, might be able to find a little bit laying around somewhere around here, hopefully. Eh, I got to watch out for the fire bats. Right, I see you coming. He chainsaw. Oh, ooh, oh I, okay, I'm on fire. Uh, yeah, well, nice. Totally forgot we get gunpowder from those guys. Come here. I want gunpowder. Because you have to 
Also, watch out because they might explode. So, a um, little word of warning there. All right, so a little bit of Ardite, Ardite, Ardite. See more Cobalt down that way. Oh, there's some, there's some Ardite right there. So it might be a little less noticeable than the uh, Cobalt, but uh, you should be able to still see it now. You guys are going to notice I have my Advanced Diamond Drill in hand. Um, Wayla at the top of the screen is saying that this is not harvestable with my Advanced Diamond Drill. It is uh, with my um, new steel pickaxe that we just crafted, but I have found, and I'm not going to use this obviously because I did go through the trouble of making the pickaxe, um, if you use big holes with the advanced diamond drill and just mine the netherrack next to it, it will actually harvest the ardite with the netherrack. I'm not going to use that. If you guys want to, that's on y'all, but for me, I'm going to go ahead and do it the old fashioned way and... Um, just use my steel pickaxe. So I'm going to do a little bit of searching around in the nether, find a, uh, a fair amount of ardite and cobalt, and I'll meet you guys back at the house when I'm done. Also, guys, in the nether, if you guys find these heat scar spiders, um, wouldn't be a bad idea to kill some. I've already uh, found a nice little flock of them. I'm not quite sure if you want to call them a flock of spiders, but whatever you prefer. Um, they drop uh, sometimes flame string, which is somewhat more durable than string. We can actually use this with Tinker's Construct. I've also went ahead and found about 15 pieces of cobalt ore, and we got 20 ardite ore. So I'm going to go ahead now, head back to base, and I'll see you guys back there in just a second. And back at the house, I've already got a few materials put together. I've already made the uh, tough binding cast, broad axe head cast, and the tough rod cast for my lumber axe that I want to put together. I've already melted down eight blocks of ardite ore and four blocks of cobalt ore in the smeltery. Uh, so far, that's given us eight ingots worth of molten manulin, and we still have eight ingots worth of molten ardite left. So, um... Practically four cobalt and four ardite, oops, that's five, should give us the eight blocks of manulin, so, or eight ingots worth of manulin. And we'll be using this to craft up some of our tools here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tough rod cast. I'm going to make that out of manulin. So I'm going to go ahead and let that pour up real quick. Um, I'm thinking. Probably going to use cobalt for the broad axe head cast pattern. Um, basically, because I don't know if it says in this one, but it should say in materials and you. Uh, cobalt mining speed should be faster, I believe, than manulin. And here we go. So the mining speed by default of cobalt is 14, and manulin is 9. So I'm going to go ahead and use cobalt for the axe head and for the handle we're going to go ahead and use manulin because uh, manulin's handle modifier is 2.5 so that should give us um, a little bit more durability than just using um, like cobalt or something like that. Now if you guys notice I didn't actually make oops, the uh, large plate pattern into a um, actual cast uh, that's because I'm going to go ahead and use for that obsidian which I'm gonna go ahead and grab that use eight pieces of obsidian because the material cost is eight that'll give us a obsidian large plate so that's one down there's two down and so far this is kind of got a nice purple feel to it so far that's not too bad um, I actually would not mind getting my cobalt in there but to do that, I'm going to go ahead and pour these into ingots real quick, and um, I'll be right back. All right, guys, got the manulin and the ardite poured out here. I've also went ahead and made, uh, you know, just stone versions of the crossbow limb and the crossbow body. I'm actually going to go ahead and pour the last two aluminum brass ingots, uh, make casts out of those so we can get ready to make our crossbow. So there's our crossbow body cast and crossbow limb cast there we go that'll work now eventually i am going to just get rid of all these stone virgins in here as well but now there we go there's our molten cobalt which we need eight ingots worth for our broadhead x 
There we go. Go ahead and pour that up. It's going to be a little bit slower. And then lastly, all we need is the tough binding cast. Now, I wouldn't mind using, like, paper just to get the extra modifier on that. So, where are we at? Let's grab 33 sugar cane. We'll convert that all into paper. And then we'll go ahead and put it in the shape of a crafting table so that way we get paper stacks. I believe that's what we're going to need for the tough binding cast. So we're going to need three of these. I'll just leave that as paper for now. And we'll have to make this into our part builder with the regular tough binding pattern. So let me go ahead and take out the cobblestone, put the paper stack in there, and that should give us, there we go, paper tough binding. All right, that'll work out. Put all that back in there. And let's go ahead and craft our lumber axe. So if we grab our cobalt axe head, let's go ahead and select the lumber axe there. So there's the axe head, large plate, manual and tough rod, paper binding. That'll give us four modifiers, nearly 3,500 durability, and a mining speed of 4.2. Um, hmm. Cobalt lumber axe. Um, you know what? I think I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave that as is for now. I believe we should be able to rename this at some point in the future, but for now, I think that'll do. All right, I'm actually gonna go put this guy into the test real fast. Right now, we don't have any modifiers on him, but we do have a fair amount of great wood trees out here. We should be able to chop them down as long as they're not too tall. I've had a problem chopping down really, really tall ones with the lumber axe. It's uh, kind of hard for it to, I guess, detect a full tree of uh, this great wood here. But this one actually looks like a decent enough size. We should be able to go and just chop this right down. So one of the benefits of having a lumber axe is that it's able to chop down the entire tree. Um, like I said, as long as it's not too tall. So let's go ahead and just do this right here. And there we go. Now, fortunately, the leaves don't really decay super fast um, because I, I guess the... Um, Great wood trees aren't under the uh, fast decay in the configs or something, maybe. I'm not sure on that 100%, or maybe they just can't. Uh, but there we go. We got that taken care of. You guys will also notice I planted my oak trees like this a few times. The reason being is for this right here, our lumber axe. Since they're all right next to each other like this and they're all touching, all we got to do is just mine one of them, and it takes them all down. Nice and easy. Good way to get some... Some easy lumber for us. So there we go. I'll go ahead and probably just replant these. Now, we can add modifiers to our lumber axe, which I am probably going to be doing here in just a moment. I'm not actually quite sure what I want to add to it. Now, I know we can actually add a lava crystal to it, which um, if we pretty much cut down uh, all those oak trees that we just did, instead of giving us... Uh, the actual oak wood, it would give us charcoal, so it would basically auto-smelt it for us. Now, I really don't want that. I actually want to be able to do that probably myself. Um, if I wanted the charcoal, I could probably make a separate lumber axe and do that, but I'm not really wanting to do that right now, so we'll just kind of stick with what we have. Now, I can make it go a little bit faster uh, if we wanted to add some redstone to it. We can find all the modifiers here in... The uh, second version of materials and use. So let's just kind of take a quick look through this real fast. Let's see, steel, pig iron. So there we go. So we can add a diamond to it to give it a little bit more durability. We could throw an emerald on it to increase its durability by 50%. Um, that might not be a bad idea. Auto repair to automatically repair it. Sunlight speeds it up. Um, there's the auto smelt option with the lava crystal which shows you how to make that and the ball of moss right there. We could add luck to it. If you add luck and the lava crystal together, you'll actually get more charcoal per log, I believe, unless they change that. <laughs> it used to be that way. And then, let's see, these are, I'm guessing, for just the weapons. Um, this is the silk touch. I don't know if I really need that. I could add more and reinforced onto it, but I don't really see the need to. Uh, these are more like weapon enchants. Now, eventually, we can add ourselves some power onto it. That way, you know, we could recharge it if we wanted to. And we can add more modifiers onto it as well. 
but I don't really plan on doing that at the moment. So right now, about the only thing I'm looking at possibly giving this is maybe an emerald. Just because I have a few of those, thanks to our uh, fortune enchant on our diamond drill. So in order to do that, we'll pop this here into our tool forge, put the emerald right here on the left side, and that'll go ahead and increase the durability. So you can see I increased it from about 3,500 to about 5,200. So that's not too bad. That takes up one of the modifiers and actually looks kind of cool on there, I think. So we'll go ahead and just do that. Just so that way it increases the durability and I can keep using it for the time being. Now, if I want to actually repair this um, without, like, uh, auto repair or anything like that, I'm going to want to repair it with some cobalt. So... All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started melting down a little bit more Ardite and Cobalt, and I'm going to go ahead and get ready to craft this crossbow. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff put together real quick, and I'll see you guys back here when I'm ready to go. All right, guys, and we're back. So I went ahead and cleaned up my inventory a little bit and kind of did a little bit of uh, deciding on what I would like to make my crossbow parts out of. So I'm going to grab another of these uh, Tinker's Weaponry books. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through this one more time. It looks like at the end of it is where it shows you how to get the bolts for the crossbow. It says, first you need a core in the form of a tool rod, and then take this tool rod to a smeltery and put it into a casting table, pour some metal onto it to coat the tip with a more damaging material. So I definitely would like to make it out of some manulin. Now, as far as like the tool rods concerned for the bolt, um, if we go ahead and scroll through Tinker's construct here, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't find the bolts real fast. I know they're in here somewhere. And there's the arrows, here's the throwing knives, here they are, manulin bolts. Um, kinda wouldn't mind making something like this. Hmm. See, in this case, it looks like it's using wood. I'm pretty sure we could use just about any um, tool rod, I'm guessing. I'm not sure if the actual tool rod is going to make a difference or not. But maybe... Let's go ahead and try this nether rack. I'm going to try this here on you. Let's grab our tool rod pattern. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a netherrack tool rod. Now, as you guys can see here in the part builder, I already set up the bowstring pattern with some of the flame string we have. Uh, you can see the valid materials here being string, enchanted fabric, which is from Thomcraft, and flame string. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this. This is going to increase our draw speed a little bit, durability, and our arrow speed. So I like the way that looks. Now, for the tough binding, I'm going to go ahead and choose obsidian. Just for a little bit of reinforced on there. I think that'll be nice. Let's go ahead and put this away. Use our tough binding pattern with our obsidian. There we go. And let's go ahead and pour the crossbow limb cast. See, so we got our manulin ready to go. Let's go ahead and pour that. Um, according to this book here, it seems like uh, metal is a little bit better, I believe, in this instance. Um, it might be a little bit harder to pull back like for a long bow or short bow, but apparently, you know, it gives it a little bit more speed from what I'm understanding. So I'm going to go ahead and go with manulin. I also kind of uh, looked through here on NEI and saw a manulin crossbow. So these are just kind of defaults. I held shift to look at the stats on this. It looked like the draw speed was, you know, a little bit higher, but the arrow speed 7.5. That looked pretty nice. Um... Crossbow for slimy, it says the draw speed is 2.6 seconds, but the arrow speed is about 6.2. So, slime crossbow might not be a bad idea at some point, too. Hmm. Maybe. All right, so let's go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to get this, our crossbow body. Looks like we're also a little bit low on fuel. We're getting low. Let's grab our manulin crossbow limb and the body. So lastly, I want to see about bolts. I'm not sure if this is actually how you do it, but let's find out. Well, it poured. Uh-oh. Did it do it? Netherrack bolt. Alright, that actually looks like that worked, actually. Lost all of our manual in there. I believe we just now need to 
cramped ourselves a fletching, which... Let's see, where are my fletchings? There they are. And I believe I should have some feathers around here somewhere. I'm going to grab one feather. We'll combine that with our fletching pattern to give us our feather fletching, which accuracy of 91. I'm not going to say that's the best or not. I'd have to look. Um, our valid materials for fletchings are feather, slime crystal, and slimy leaves. Um, might look into the slime stuff a little bit later, but for now I think I'm okay. So here we go. Here's our bolts. Put our netherrack bolt there. Feather fletching there, and that's going to give us 144 manulin bolts. Wow. All right, so that doesn't look horrible. Base damage of two hearts. Short bow attack of 2.4, uh, 2 to 4 hearts, I'm sorry. And accuracy of 93.5%. It also has two modifiers on it, so we could add some damage onto it with possibly some quartz. Quartz would probably increase the attack as well, so... All right, let's go ahead and craft our crossbow. So it's a manulin crossbow. Let's see it. We'll do a guessing game here just because it's not showing up right. So I'm guessing we need to flip those. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool looking. Uh, all purple. So max damage 18. Wow. Draw speed of 5.1 with an arrow speed of 9. Ooh. Now to think of a name. All right, guys, I think I know what I'm going to name my crossbow. I'm going to call this the Fred Slayer. I think that'll work out pretty well. So if you guys notice, I sometimes call zombies Fred. And, well, sorry, Fred, but I got a crossbow now. And it's a little unfortunate for you. The sun's actually just now starting a set. What timing, right? Let's go ahead and place these guys in here. I'll clean that up a little bit later, but we got ourselves our manulin bolts. I think we're just about ready to give this a try. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab 10 pieces of my redstone blocks here. I'm going to grab 10 pieces of redstone. Reason for this is 5 blocks of redstone and 5 pieces of redstone add up to 50 pieces of redstone. And I'm going to add two modifiers worth of redstone to my Fred Slayer in hopes that it'll increase our draw speed. I'm hoping that's what it does. So, so it should add haste to it. So draw speed of 5.05 .05 from 5.1. So yes, that should help our draw speed. And actually it looks pretty cool. So if we go ahead and go through this, hopefully that'll go down. Looks like it is slowly but surely. So there it is. Two modifiers worth of redstone. We still have one left, and that's got our draw speed down to 4.4 seconds. Not too bad. So if we right-click just once, and we don't have to hold it or anything, you can see the animation for it loading it. It looks like it's loaded, ready to go. All I have to do now is actually come out here and actually find some mobs. It looks like our trees are actually almost done growing as well, too. So here we go. Ooh, it looks like we got some skeleton up here. There he is. Oh, nice. That's a one-shot, too. Not bad at all. All right, spider. Sorry, buddy. And that's got some really good accuracy. I'm really liking that. Takes a second for it to reload, but we should be able to snipe things a, a fair distance away. Uh-oh. Missed the skeleton. I thought he was going to continue walking forward, but... Nice. Look at that. All right, I'm really enjoying the crossbow here. This is going to be interesting. And we can also pick up our bolts. So um, ammunition for the crossbows, and I'm guessing for everything else, um, makes you a fair amount, I'm guessing, with the better materials that you use. I'm just going to make a you know, wild guess here. Oh, oh, you would dodge that, wouldn't you? Don't move. Oh, this is nice. I wonder if a left click does anything. Eh, two hearts of damage, just... Whacking it with the crossbow itself. All right, that's pretty awesome. I wouldn't mind increasing the draw speed on it even further. Oh, hey, what do you know? Hey, Fred, how you doing? Sorry about that. Not really. <laughs> and Fred gave me his head. There we go. We got a zombie head. Awesome. And you're trying to patrol the front of my house. No, sir. That's not how it works. So I really wouldn't mind getting some more redstone on this. I think what I'm going to do real quick, though, 
So I am going to jump in here. Where is it in here? Where is it at? Right there. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a ball of moss. I want to see how it looks on here first. I may not put it on there. Um, oh, actually, it doesn't actually change the way it looks. All right, that's fine. And that'll give it auto repair, so it should hopefully repair back to full in the sunlight. I'm not sure. It should work in the... Maybe not as fast in the uh, nighttime, but I wouldn't mind also adding another modifier's worth of redstone. So I'm going to grab five more blocks, five pieces of redstone. As you guys can see, I grabbed nine pieces of gold. I'm also going to grab a diamond. So I'm going to craft myself a block of gold and a piece, or a diamond. Should give us an extra modifier on our crossbow. And we'll add another set of redstone. Hopefully to increase the draw speed even faster. Eventually I might make a new crossbow. Maybe one with... Um, I might make it with the slime crossbow uh, bar. What is that called? Limb cast? Yeah, that thing. <laughs> might eventually make it with that. Because it might increase the draw speed a little bit more. Which might be an idea. But from here... Oh yeah, this is nice. Just takes a second for it to uh, pull back. And, okay, I was going to say baby zombies. Not a one shot. There you go, Fred. I hope you enjoy this uh, crossbow I made for you. No, baby Fred bad. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to about do it for today. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any helpful tips, tricks, or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. If you guys would rate the video, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you guys then. Goodbye.